Hey, how's it going? Jason here, and today we're going to be working on the starter material of this Blue Atlas Cedar. So right here I've got uh, Blue Atlas uh, starter material, and it's basically in a one gallon, and it's pretty tall. Um, it's pretty tall. What we're going to do is we're going to um, try to put some movement into the trunk here, because right now it's pretty straight. See, it's pretty straight. Uh, we're going to put some wire, put some raffia on this thing and try to create some movement. And then we'll discuss the options we can take into designing this tree. Blue Atlas Cedars are pretty flexible, uh, but if you put a lot of twist in it, they will break. Down here, it's definitely going to be a lot more brittle. So if you put some heavy bends in it, you're probably going to snap it. So what you can do just to protect against that is just apply some raffia. All right, so I'm going to prepare some raffia really quick and then we're going to apply it to this tree and then we're going to put some wire and then we're going to start bending. All right, so I've got the raffia right here. Um, it's prepared, and now we're just gonna start wrapping up the trunk and kind of get this really well protected so that if we put in some heavy bends, we put a lot of stress on the trunk, it won't break it. You know, try your best to weave between the branches. Just try your best to do that. Uh, take your time while you're doing it. Uh, that way you can save as many as you can. But really, this thing has so many branches everywhere that that's not really a concern of mine. I mean, if you look at the length of this thing, this is pretty long. So now we can test out the flexibility on this. And you can see that with the raffia, it's going to give that additional support in the trunk so you can get pretty aggressive on the bends. All right, so now I'm going to apply some wire and we're going to use the seven millimeter wire. This guy, the big thick one right here, we're gonna use this guy. So this is a little tall. Um, so I'm gonna have to bring this down and I'm gonna cut off a strand so I don't have to work with the whole thing. You know, something like this. So we'll use this on here. Um, and then, it, you know, up here at the top, um, if we have to go on a smaller wire, that's fine too. All right, so now that we have this raffia and wired up, we can put some movement into it. And now we can start thinking about the design. So there's a couple things you can do with starter material like this. You can create, you know, you can cut it short and just create something like a slant or an informal upright. Wait for these branches to grow and just create a little tree like this. Or we can get a little bit more creative and do something like a literati. Um, you know, this thing goes all the way up to the top. So we've got a lot of space, a lot of branches to work with up here. And I think since we have this, I would like to utilize it in some way rather than just lopping it off around here and just creating a small tree like that, which would be easy to do. And you can kind of see it It'd be really easy to do. You just kind of go like this, drop these branches down really easily, bring these down, create the apex right there. And you've got like a really simple tree right there. But I think what I'd like to do instead is utilize this at the top here and see what we can create with it. Um, I think I'd like to explore maybe some type of penjing style literati, um, you know, with something sweeping down, uh, something really elegant. So let's give that a go. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some movement into this tree. Now when you're thinking about movement, don't always think about creating these really loopy, um, you know, round, you know, like big curves and anything like that. It doesn't always have to be like that. Sometimes you can just create simple turns like that and then kind of work up your tree like this. And this is a way that if you're nervous with your tree, you know, just like that, you can create a little bit of movement in the trunk instead of just a straight trunk. You can see that now it's just got, instead of just being straight, it's got a little bit of a turn right there. And sometimes that's all you need to create a little bit of character, just like that. And then turn it the other way. Now, of course, wiring is still helps it because uh, you wouldn't be able to get these kind of fine details without doing it. But you can, you know, once you get that set, give another push again. And just like this, you've got some basic turns. It doesn't have to be something crazy. And then if you tilt it this way, you can get a little bit, see a little bit more of the movement starting from the beginning. You can do a little bit more if you want. Go in there, do a little bit more. Remember you've raffia this, so you're going to have a lot more stability in there. You don't have to worry about the trunk too much. All right, make sure when you do the bends, do the bends here. Make sure you do the bends where the wire supports it, right there. And that's where you want the bend. That's where it's going to support it right there, okay? Just like that. So now you got some basic movement going up the tree. Now, if you hear some cracks, just remember you got the raffia on there to protect it. So you can just go left, right, create some little minute movements. We've already got a little bit more movement than we did before. That was just straight before. Um, but what you want to do is, as you're coming up, you want kind of the finer movements to be at the top. 
okay? So it's kind of more narrower at the top, like that. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of movement now, right? But now I've got the rest of this. So what I want to do is I'm going to get a little creative here. I'm going to try to bring this down, this top one down, see if I might be able to use it as a side grip. So I'm going to give it that go and see how this turns out. So I got this curving down a little bit. So I've got that curving down a little bit, but now I need some more wire here on the end here to do something interesting. So I'm gonna put some, a little bit more wire right there. Okay, now I've got some very interesting movement. Kind of comes up around and then it comes down like this. It kind of looks like that. So what I did was basically I put some really simple movement in the base here, which is just kind of a left, right, just so it's not just a straight trunk. It's got a little bit of interesting movement at the bottom. And ten, you tend to do that um, when it's an older part of the trunk and you're kind of worried about bending. If you want to play it on the safer side, you don't want to do anything massive, you can do little turns or little zigzags just to give it some appeal, um, just to give it some character down here at the bottom. When you get to the younger branches here at the top, you can go a little bit more extreme and bring these down or whip the whole thing down if you want like we did here. Um, and what I'm going to do is end up creating an apex over here. And what you end up with is uh, maybe a little bit like a penjing with a little bit more character. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start bringing some of these branches down, some of these down here, and we're going to wire and see how this turns out. Um, I think that this tree has a lot more character in the trunk than it did before. Um, so even at this angle, it's not that bad. If I tilt it like that, it's not that bad either. But even at this, it has a little bit of a sweeping motion. Um, so I'm going to put some wire on some of these branches here and then we'll see how it looks and then we'll make adjustments as we go. So at this point you can make a couple decisions. You can lose this entire segment here that I brought down. You can lose that entire thing and you can already see that there's a tree there. In fact, I already positioned the branches for it and the apex is right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. First branch, second branch, I got back branch back here. It kind of works up this tree. So I could just snip this whole thing off and I would have my literati. Um, but what we can do sometimes is we can use the top of the tree and create something different. So in this case, I've got this branch coming down here. Now, I don't know what you guys think of it. Um, maybe you guys would prefer I just lop this all off and not use it. So I want to experiment a little bit and we'll see what I can do with this thing. It kind of doesn't go with the whole flow of the tree. Part of it is this branch is conflicting with it, this one right here. Um, but let's see. I mean, if I cut this off, it's going to be really easy as a literati tree and I'm done. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can bend this a little bit more, see if I can get it to be part of the main tree a little bit better, uh, see if I can get it to kind of uh, be in more harmony with the rest of the trunk. So let's, let me give that a go. All right, as you can see, I was able to get this closer in. Um, you can see it's a lot closer in now than it was before. It's almost a uh, U-turn right there. In fact, I wanna give it a little bit more. Um, I wanna give it a lot of character up here because one of the things that's unique about this tree, you know, this is kind of standard. It's kind of zigzag here on the bottom of the trunk is in this kind of literati is that there's a lot of character up here and I wanna create even more character than that. So let's see what I can do. So I kind of like what's going on here. So let me hide this one, this branch, because that's conflicting right now. And you can see that this branch right here, this one right here, is conflicting with this one right here. So I actually really like the character that's going up here. Um, really, in the literati, you're looking for a lot of movement, and hit, this has a lot of movement. I mean, it's going up, around, behind it, back in front of it. So this branch right here no longer is necessary. So I'm going to cut this back. But that branch is no longer necessary. So now your eye is drawn to this one only. Now. What I like about this tree is this whole section here. So this one overpowers it. This one right here, see how they're equal right now? So this one I can shorten up. And I'll shorten this one up incrementally. And now you can start to see the tree start to take shape. And then all these down here, really unnecessary. I can pluck those off. I can cut these ones off here at the bottom. 
uh, they're not really necessary. So now I'm going to do a little bit more detail on some of these, just I want them to sit in the right spots. Um, and then we'll see how it looks. So here's how the tree looks, kind of like that. But it can be angled like that, it can be angled like this. Uh, we can decide when we pot that. But I guess what I'd like for you guys to take away from this video is mainly that when you've got the thicker part of the trunk here, you don't need to do uh, really complex things to create movement. It can be as simple as just a little turn to the left, turn to the right, another turn to the left and just basically break up that straight trunk. And then as you get to the top, yes, I could have cut this off right here, uh, right there, and created that original tree that used this branch, remember this one right here, and I could create a very simple literati. Uh, but this tree offered me a lot more at the top of the tree. It was basically another foot from this point right here is another foot. So I was able to utilize that to create some interesting movement up there at the top, maybe loop it back down, just to create something interesting, something different with the literati. Um, just to make the tree a little bit more unique. When you have the older trunk at the base, you know, you just be a little bit more conservative. And as you get to the top where you've got the younger branches, you can get a little bit more aggressive, especially if you've raffiated it. Um, you can go and create, uh, you know, really big turns, uh, you know, turns coming all the way down. Um, and what used to be the apex now no longer is the apex, is actually just a side branch. Um, what will happen up here is that this whole section will continue to grow because this is the apex now. Uh, this will grow up and this will get thicker and thicker and eventually this turn right here will be hidden a little bit more because I'll take one of these branches here, especially this guy right here. I'll use him, this one right here, to develop uh, a, a branch right here to basically become the new leader in the new apex and then this one will eventually proportion out and will look more like a side branch that has a lot of movement rather than just this one apex that was dipped down. Um, I hope that gives you a little bit more of insight into what you can do with the trunk when it's a little bit too thick to do major movement and what you can do with the trunk when it's young enough to do a lot of movement. Also, let me know if you preferred if I had just cut this off and used the original tree. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Um, and as always, thanks for watching.